that was the idea. One more just like yeah. that. When I first moved to Boston, which was in 1972, uh, the day I drove into town, um, I went to the uh, Harvard Common, which is an outdoor park to modern lovers, which includes Jonathan Richmond, were playing in the park that day. And uh, it was the first music that I had seen. I went there to actually get into music. Um, and as soon as I saw the Modern Lovers, I said, this is definitely the right place to be. Modern Lovers, is that's the band that really struck home for me. And then uh, after that, I followed Jonathan Richmond's career as a solo artist. Um, but the Modern Lovers, which was clearly um, under his control, uh, had a certain um, simplicity about them then, too. It was a unique, you know, original band. Um, pretty rocked out and uh, very unique. The Modern Lovers record is um, a really important record in the history of rock and roll and sort of a bridge between the Velvet Underground and a lot of the later punk bands. You know, the Sex Pistols did... Uh, did Roadrunner. Then Jonathan kind of uh, gravitated towards doing music mostly on his own. He changed directions completely. I guess he decided he didn't want to play rock and roll anymore. He found that volume, playing at a rock volume, got in the way with the, the message he was trying to get across and what he was trying to do. Basically, he'd go on stage with an acoustic guitar and play to the audience. And a lot of the, the, the later stuff is seems like it's almost oriented towards children. Some people would uh, uh, applaud heavily and some people would laugh at him because they really didn't understand his intellect. It became pretty obscure until uh, something about Mary relaunched his career. He just always had something that was different than everyone else and he's always had that and always maintained it. He travels around now with, with just a drummer and, and him playing guitar and um, that's what matters, that, that simplicity. He's very prolific, he must have a thousand songs. Jonathan Richmond is uh, criminally underknown. I, I think he's a, a very important figure in the history of rock and roll. I have a friend who gave me some questions that are kind of weird. He writes for South Park. Oh, cool. We saw the movie. Mm -hmm. That was great. Let's hear these questions. Do you like ice cream? If so, what is your favorite flavor? Vanilla. What's the first car you owned? And how much did it cost? Volvo. Um, I got it when I was about 30 years old. Cost about 1,400 bucks. It was worth about six. And Tommy? First car? First car. 69 Ford Econoline. What was your first job? Tommy, then Jonathan. Uh, I haven't had it yet. I was a messenger um, for a messenger company in Boston, foot messenger in the Boston's financial district. When we're not in the movies, Tommy and I have a nightclub show. I sing and play guitar and he plays drum. And before that, years ago, I started out as a late teenager with a rock band and I had several versions of it. And so I'm from the Boston area, so I started out playing just wherever people would let me play for free. And once they heard me, the list narrowed, but uh, I would play coffee houses and would play, you know, just wherever I would just borrow people's amplifiers and turn them up real loud and make all kinds of noise. And like that, ran away with their hands over their ears, saying <laughs> never again, <laughs> saying do not let that person in this club. And once we had a band though, I improved because I was only one fourth of the whole sound. So people didn't run away, they run away, they just walked away, sort of mumbling to themselves. So it was better. And a few people liked us. If you could live at any time in history for two weeks, what time would that be? Ooh. You only get two weeks. Yeah, but you don't have to trade, right? You can still come back to this one afterwards? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> First, that's really good. I'd like to see what was going on in, in the Middle East around two or 3,000 years ago, something like that, maybe. Or maybe um, Greece right around 2,500 years ago, something like that. Tommy? I don't know. 
Southern California in the early 60s would have been a lot of fun. You were if I was in a, like a surf band or something. That sounds fun to me. But yours is good too. It's yeah. just it, yours is like got sickness and uh, you know all kinds of plagues and stuff. So and, does yours. Well, yeah, but <laughs> it's a lot more fun though. Do you collect anything? Dust. I live in Tucson, Arizona, and Jonathan uh, came through there and had this idea he was going to use different drummers in different towns and different parts of the country. And I guess you did that for a while, yeah, right? Yeah, for several months. And then uh, he came to Tucson, and uh, I never even met him, you know. I show up in Tucson. I was going to play Tucson and Phoenix with him. And this was like 93, about 10 years ago. And we played the shows, and we got along really well, and he goes, hey, you know, uh, I got these gigs in uh, Austin and uh, it went about another week and we just hopped in my Toyota pickup and started playing shows and that was probably thousand shows ago, you know, just like we got along pretty good. These are good questions. Yeah. Is this all from that guy in South Park? Yeah. These are great. I wear like this, I got this brown, what is that, a Hamburg? A Stetson, brown Stetson with a brown band on it. And uh, I think it's seven and a half or something. And it blew off of his head in New York one time. And Roll, you were there, weren't you? Well, I mean, not that you're there because no one's there. It's just, <laughs> but it rolled across the street and cars everywhere and it didn't get hit, remember Something that? Something like that, yeah, yeah, really miraculous. Anyway, I love that hat, it's a brown hat. That kind of makes you think that is my hat. Okay, so I looked at the script and I, first of all, I was kind of scared. I didn't know whether I would be able to make up, a, make up anything good for it or not, because if it was a script that I didn't like, you know, the whole thing might have to have been off, at least that way. But I said, yeah, okay, I can do this. I called him up, called up Pete Farrelly and said, you know what you need? You need a theme song. And he said, yeah. I said, yeah. So I said, you want to hear it? <laughs> so I just, uh, you know, played it for him, and that ended up being the theme song. Some of the other stuff had already been, he, there were other songs that he'd heard of ours before that he just apparently liked, like Let Her Go Into the Darkness. Uh, I didn't even see exactly how it fit into the movie myself, but if he wanted to use it, fine. Um, he, he wanted to use another song of ours, True Love and Is Not Nice, which also wasn't written for the movie. Okay, it's a really hot day, about 4.16 in the afternoon. You're sitting on a porch. What do you want to drink? So what time is it? 4.16. <laughs> is it beer time yet? Uh, 4.16, sitting on a... I'd, I'd probably have to say maybe a Tecate and a little lime, you know what I mean? Not six. What it, time is it now? Probably about that. <laughs> Sound good? Let's go, get some, let's go get a six pack. There we go. Same for you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I personally was scared about falling out of that tree, though, at the beginning of the movie, because this, like, uh, wardrobe people said, you know, they're going to set up all these stunt harnesses for you and all this safety equipment, but you, you guys aren't going to need it. And we're not? I said, no. I said, we've been out there and looked at it. This is, you're only going to be about 10 foot off the ground. There's going to be this big wooden platform right under you, probably with mattresses and everything. You won't need it. But that didn't happen. It no, that no was the problem. Platform. It didn't happen. But yeah, it was a good idea. So, so we get there. It's not 10 feet. It looks more like 18 or 20. Like it's, there's no pet mattresses. There's no platform. It's just these trees. And the stunt coordinator is up there smiling at us. He's he, like, he's there. Blog, what do you call it? When you stand in for the people so they can get the camera angles. Anyway, he's there with a the, with the prop guitar, just smiling, because he knows how to a, do it. They have parachutes and <laughs> stuff. They have everything, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but he's just there, supporting himself on the tree limbs, some really great way that I didn't know how to do. You know, and, and he's there, you know, hi, boys. And so, well, come on up. And so, it looks way long, and, uh, Says that uh, you didn't want your stunt harnesses, so we didn't bring them, and so it just sit like this, and so you're, you're sitting sort of like that, which I might have been able to do, except trying to play the guitar, and 
I'm, I'm not good at lip syncing. I don't know whether you would know that from watching that particular movie. But, uh, so I was trying to lip sync, which is something I usually don't do. And trying to do all those things. And then to add insult to injury, we got Peter and Bobby down below busting our balls, <laughs> right? Well, I wouldn't think, they didn't do that, did they? Yeah. They did. Well, they said all kinds of terrible things. Oh, so you don't need stud harnesses, Douglas Fairbanks and Jackie Chan. How are you doing up there now? <laughs> Were you scared? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so anyway. I'm scared right now. Yeah. See you in, the, in this carpet. If you could be one other person, who would that be? Tommy, because that way if he chose me, then we'd still have the band. Yeah. <laughs> we'd How'd still get... have jobs. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here. <laughs> You gotta get bored with it. That's the end. Mary, there's just something about Mary. Mary.